Hi everyone, welcome back to our series on building a real estate application app on Bubble. In this video in the series, we're gonna be looking at some more common functionality that we've seen our own clients build into their real estate related apps. We're gonna be looking at different forms and uh, rent collection, connecting to a payment gateway so that you can actually process payments. So if you're building an app for uh, landlords, property owners, and they need to be able to collect payments, track the statuses of payments, track the statuses of maintenance requests. That's what we're looking at here. These are features that our own clients have built in. And so I wanna point out a couple of approaches that you can take and where you can customize things for your own flows and your own needs. Now, if you're new around here, my name is Gabby and I am the co-founder of Coaching No Code Apps, where we help non-technical entrepreneurs build businesses with applications and also help improve and scale, grow existing businesses all without code. Now let's get started. Gonna make my video here a bit smaller and take a look at this example application that I've put together um, to talk about some of these features. Now keep in mind, there's a lot of different ways you can take this. You can lay these out, design these differently. I've just kind of highlighted some of the functionality that um, we, we see come up very frequently with these types of apps. So on the upper left corner, I have some top level details about their rent. So when the next payment is due, March 1st, um, what their monthly rent is. So this is you know, a number that's not going to change typically. And then the variable utilities that will fluctuate every single month. So this is going to be um, summed up uh, across all of the utilities that they're paying for. And I've got a little icon here that I can click to show a breakdown. So however the property owner, the manager wants to collect that data, whether they're getting information via API from the different utility providers, um, or they are keeping track somehow, you know, you can organize this in your data structure so that you can um, uh, display it back to the tenant in this way. Or maybe utilities aren't involved and they pay for those separately and they're really just managing rent, just kind of showing you different things that you can do here, okay? Um, down below, we're gonna see the list of all the payments that they've made. So just a kind of record, uh, you know, and a little audit trail of, uh, of their payments with the date, an ID that is generated by the payment gateway. In this case, we've connected to Stripe. And so this is the charge ID that Stripe generated. In case something goes wrong, we need to track things down. We've got a reference number there. Uh, on the upper right side, we have a couple of action buttons that the user can take here. Uh, and keep in mind, you know, the layout that I have here is just to kind of have everything available in one view. Of course, if you're gonna build out a more comprehensive portal for these tenants, you might have things on separate pages. You know, there's a menu, they click to go to just their maintenance requests, it sends them to a different page um, versus their contracts and e-documents that they've uploaded that they need to keep track of versus payment history, rent details. Um, or you can do it in one page and have different tabs that you can toggle between. It's completely up to how you want to design it. I've literally just placed everything here in one view so that we can get to it quickly. So my action buttons here, I can create a maintenance ticket, uh, excuse me, create a maintenance ticket. That's gonna show a pop-up to fill out a quick form, creates a new ticket in the database. That way the owner or the maintenance team can see all of the tickets coming in from all of their properties, all of their tenants all at once. I'll show you that in a second. Um, here I can click to make a payment. Now this, I might as well go through the whole flow here so you can see what I've done. Um, this is gonna take me to a pre-built checkout page that Stripe has, uh, that, that they make available for you. We love working with Stripe for Payment Gateway. There are many other gateways that you can work with if your country doesn't support it. Just take a look, see if they offer an API, you'll likely be able to integrate it with, uh, with Bubble. Um, so the way that this is set up here, we're gonna see just a general title for what this payment is for, the total amount, and then another description here. In our case, we're just gonna show the month that the rent is for, rent and utilities. Um, and then on the right side, we're gonna pay with a credit card. Now I've actually run through this page a couple of times, so it's remembering my test credit card number here. But of course I can change and fill in another number. Um, Stripe also accepts many other, you can see here this just popped up, many other payment methods. So you can do Google Pay, um, you can do bank transfer, so you can connect to bank accounts uh, to pull directly, do ACH debits, um, a variety of things there, debit cards as well. Okay, so I'm gonna use the same card so I can show you what the full payment flow looks like, how I've set it up. So I'll pay there and it's gonna send me back to my application and do a couple things in the database so that my app can continue to move forward and actually keep everything updated on our side, not necessarily Stripe side. Stripe is really just that payment processor. So I see an alert message there. It says, thank you for your payment. You can see that my next payment due just advanced by one month because I've now paid for the month of March. So the next one now is in April. You can see I have another payment line that was added here. Um, today is the 1st of February, so that's the payment date. 
Uh, again, you can get more detail to show specifically, make it a little bit more clear what these payments are for. My, date, my dates might be uh, out of sync here. Um, but it generated a new ID. Again, the payment amount, you can download the receipt so they can keep track of everything. And then all of this information can also be exposed to, of course, the landlord side, the property owner side. Okay. Now this update payment uh, method button is going to go to a similar screen on the Stripe side. So this is Stripe hosted. That way all of the payment information is securely transferred to Stripe. Um, the app is not saving any credit card details or anything like that. This is just to collect a card. It's not going to process a payment. It's just so that they don't have to, you know, type in their credit card over and over again or their bank account. Now with something like rent, right, which we know is going to be a monthly uh, or whatever the frequency is, but it's going to be a recurring payment. You can absolutely set up systems where um, it, there's an auto pay, right? So whatever the amount is on that date and time, right? It, it can be a variable amount. We don't have to anticipate the amount uh, ahead of time because if utilities are going to fluctuate, that total amount that they're going to pay, if they're going to do everything together, is going to be different. So you can definitely set up a system where on, you know, let's say the first of every month or maybe the last day of every month, you're going to charge a saved payment method, whatever that amount is. Maybe you send the tenant uh, you know, a notice three days in advance, a week in advance. Hey, your bill is upcoming. We're about to auto charge you if you need to change your payment method or if you prefer to um, not have it go through automatically so that you can pay it manually. I mean, you know, all of these little things and flows that you see in normal um, tenant management portals, payment systems like this where you have recurring billing, all these things you can do. Um, so just keep that in mind, uh, a lot of flexibility here. And it really comes down to integrating with Stripe's API, um, you know, in a more custom way. So for this payment and for the credit card card collection, I'm actually using the Stripe plugin that bubble has available for you in the plugin marketplace that covers a lot of the most common functionality. So doing some quick, you know, one-time charges, um, fixed subscriptions, collecting credit card details, a lot of the basic stuff, but for more custom payment management and functionality and flows, if you have delays on things, if you're paying, if your users are paying other users, if you need to pay out to users and split payments, all of these different fancy things, uh, if you leverage the API directly with the API connector, which is another plugin that Bubble has, uh, then you get much more control because you now have the ability to uh, define your API calls yourself and you're not uh, really working within the confines of the plugin. So different levels of um, uh, uh, just kind of how much heavy lifting you want to do, just, you know, d depending on how complex you need your features to be. Okay, so let's take a look at the create maintenance ticket functionality here. So when I click on this, I'm going to see a pop up and I can fill out a quick form, get in detail so that the maintenance team knows what this ticket is about. Um, so I've got a couple of option sets set up in my data structure to help categorize everything. I've got a set for urgency. So what's the priority level of this ticket? Is this an emergency? Is this something that is just a general repair? I can schedule it, you know, whenever, no rush. Um, or do I not even need anybody to come over to my unit, my property? I just need to let somebody know about something. Um, let's, so let's fill this out. So let's say I have an urgent problem. Um, I've got a type. So just kind of let, letting them know what, what category of, of maintenance or repair are we talking about here? Um, let's say my, uh, something broke down, my, my refrigerator broke down and I have all this food and it's all going to go bad. Right? So um, we'll say I'm best time to call in the morning and I have it pre-filling with my phone number. Given that I'm a tenant who has set up a lease agreement, they will likely have my phone number on file. So, and, and this phone number is likely going to be the phone number to call, but it is still an input where I can change things. Um, I can do the same thing with an email if I want to offer different contact methods. Um, so, you know, help my fridge broke and it's full of... Okay, so I can back out of it, hit cancel, it'll clear the form, close the pop-up, or I can submit it, have another alert message there telling me that it went through, and I see my, my ticket here. Notice that the default status for this ticket is set to submitted. I've got another option set, I'll show you in a moment here, that helps the owner keep track of you know, which, tic which tickets are open, which ones are in progress. Um, which ones still need to be addressed. Okay, so these are all of my tickets that I've submitted here with different uh, different needs, right, as a tenant. Okay, so I'm going to take you to now the other side of the ticket 
uh, management. So from the owner's perspective or the maintenance team's perspective, I've got this page open here. So this is a different page on the same application. Okay, so different users, when they're logged in, you can create rules around what kind of data they have access to. The tenant can only see their stuff, while, whereas the owner can, can see information about multiple tenants, but only within the properties that they are responsible for, not other property managers' um, tenant information. So this is just a screen to look at the tickets. Uh, so I've got my list here, and I have a couple of ways to filter them down to keep track of you know, what's what. So I can filter by status, so what is submitted and then, you know, and not addressed, right? So I have, let's say it's four, yeah, four, four submitted tickets. Um, I don't have anything that was canceled. I have one ticket in progress and one ticket that is complete, right? Or I can reset and then see everything all at the same time. I can filter by urgency, right? Which one are my urgent tickets? Uh, so we've got three urgent tickets. I can show urgent and submitted. So this is the only one that is urgent that probably needs addressing right this second, right? So you can mix and match your different filters. And I've also got type, so just by different category. Um, and, and obviously you can see I've got these uh, charts here to make it easier to visualize um, and also help the, the, the user see how their business is doing, see how uh, productive their team is, if they're behind on tickets, help them make decisions on uh, how to triage these, these maintenance requests, right? So I'm using a bubble plugin for charts. It's very basic. It only lets you do a single series. You don't have too much control over the look and feel of it. Um, but for this use case, it was a quick way to visualize it. There are many charts and visualization tools um, in the plugin marketplace. Some very fancy, gives you lots of granular control, multi-series, many, many different types of charts line, bar, area, radar, I mean, you name it, you'll probably find it there, uh, you know, the little bubble scatter charts uh, for, for all sorts of use cases. Uh, a lot of our clients who are building financial-based applications are making heavy use of uh, those other plugins where you get much more control. So know that this is not the extent of your charting um, uh, capabilities here. But yeah, so the as the owner or the um, you know landlord, property manager, maintenance team, they can look at what their tickets are. They see all the important information. What's the property? What's the phone number to call? And from here, they can you know update the status. So we can say, uh, ah, looks like nothing's wrong with the fridge. They just pulled the power cord out, and it's actually fine. Um, so we're going to cancel that. And so you can see here how the the status chart changed, right? So now I can look at my canceled, and that's the only one that's canceled. And so from the tenant's perspective, you know, they're going to see a real-time update. Notice how I didn't need to refresh the page or anything because it's all data-driven. When I make those changes, I'm updating the database. And so this is just a page that is also pulling from the same database, and it's going to reflect that in real time. Um, I probably sound like a broken record at this point, but if you've been watching any of our videos from this series or any of our other series, these are data-driven applications. Your data structure is everything. It completely dictates what you can do. Um, I mean, plain and simple, it dictates what you can do. Uh, it dictates the logic that you put together. It dictates how well it's going to perform. Um, so these are things that we're guiding our clients on, best practices on how to put you know, efficient data structures together because it all starts there. And then of course, that data structure is gonna help inform your front end designs, your layouts, you know, um, how your users interact with, with these screens. So let's jump into the back end and take a quick look at some of this functionality here. So this is again from the tenant's perspective. So I've got a repeating group list here to show all of my right here, um, the rent payments. So when I'm searching for payments, I just need to make sure that it's constrained on my property. So I'm not seeing anybody else's payments. I can have other filters, you know, just like the owner. Maybe I wanna filter, be able to filter by date, be able to export this information. Um, send myself an email with it. Again, I can create all this functionality and build it in there. Sort, sort the payments, you know, by different fields, different variables. Um, on the right side, I've got my repeating group of tickets. So very similar here, just looking at all maintenance tickets that are for my property. And I can as well filter by, just like the owner can, uh, or the landlord, you know, status, um, the urgency if, if I am one to submit many tickets and I want to uh, find one more quickly here. We're gonna take a look at the uh, make payment workflow to show you how I've put this together. So there's actually several things that are happening 
from one button click. Multiple tables in my database are getting updated so that this everything is all in sync. The very first action is an action that comes from the plugin that I'm working with. It's a Stripe plugin that was published by Bubble. Again, it's the thing that covers the majority of common functionality, but if you do want to get more custom with it, you'll likely go use the you'll likely use the API connector tool, which uh, gives you more control. So here I can dictate everything about what is happening with the charge, the email address, the amount, I'm taking the sum of uh, all of those individual utility bills. I'll show you the structure of that in a second, plus their monthly rent. And that's the output that we see on that checkout page, right? The name, the description, the amount, uh, and the email address. Once that comes through and they're they're redirected back to the app, we're going to create a record in our application. So an internal payment um, log of, uh, of this transaction, because there might be additional details that have nothing to do with Stripe or your payment gateway of choice, um, but, but really help the rest of the application function properly. Um, so associating the payment with a property or a tenant or a landlord, right? Stripe doesn't have that information necessarily, but internally you can create these links so that everything else in your app works well. So I'm just kind of capturing everything that happened about the payment. Then I'm going to update all of my utility bills. So if I jump over here to the data structure of my utility bill, I set it up this way so that you can see how you can aggregate information. So every individual utility, right? So I've got this organized by type with an option set electric versus gas versus water. That's going to generate a new record. And for each property, it's going to be due on some date. It's going to have some amount. So all I need to do is search for all the utility bills for a specific property that has not been paid. And then I've got the total sum of all of my utilities. And so what I'm doing here when the payment is being made, I'm updating those utilities, right, for that property where it's not paid yet and updating the paid date. So now I can mark those as done and now I'm reset back to zero until next month when I get my next utility bills. Also updating the property, I'm keeping track of what that next rent due date is. It's just kind of creating a shortcut for myself. You know, you want your application to work for you, not the other way around. So create these shortcuts. Again, it's data structure. It's, it, it's making it as efficient as possible, but also as useful as possible to um, you know, get this logic set up properly. And a lot of times I'll create fields like this where, yeah, I could probably look at the last payment date and then add month, one month from there and I get the same result. But why not just create a shortcut for myself to keep track of the, the due date in a separate place? So I'm just taking whatever it is right now and adding one month to it. This is for the tenant's property. Then I'm showing an alert message to say that we're good to go, okay? That's a very quick, straightforward flow. Of course, we're not addressing any possible edge cases. What happens if their credit card fails, if it's expired, or um, you know, if they typed in the number wrong? Um, what if they are? What if they don't have enough funds? What if they can only make a partial payment? Right? What if they do have an auto payment set up and they want to manually pay for one of the months, um, but not for the rest? So. The way that we like to approach things is we'll build things out for you know the, the ideal scenario, the most perfect flow, and then address all of those edge cases around it. That way you have something to compare it to so you know what, what, what does it have to do in order to work well or work closer to perfect. Um, so a lot of strategy involved here. These are all things that we're teaching our clients to how to um, approach their different flows, not just the technical bits of how do we get specific things to work in a certain way, but also um, is this the right way to approach it? Are there other um, best practices that we can employ here to make sure that long-term at scale, it's working really well, okay? Here's our workflow for submitting a maintenance ticket. So this is creating another record in the database under a different data type, capturing all the details from that pop-up form and just resetting everything from there, hiding the pop-up, resetting it, showing a success message, okay? So this is a quick look at really common functionality that we're seeing in real estate applications being built for uh, property managers, for tenants, um, landlords that need to organize all of this and collect this information from all of their users and have everything be transparent and synced on both sides. All right. Now, if you are new around here, make sure to subscribe to the channel, uh, click on that notification bell so that you can get updated when the next video in our series is released. We'll actually be doing some showcasing of existing real estate applications that were built by our clients um, and kind of show off some of the functionality that they've put in, um, show you different approaches that they've taken as well.
If you're building a real estate application, I hope you were able to take something away from this. So we'll be looking forward to seeing you in the next video and happy building.